Welcome to Hartford, Alaska Native News and Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, Key Long and your crew on the Navajo Nation. Nice to have you with us for oh so many years. And hello to my good friends in Seminole Broadcasting. Hi, Lawrence and everyone else there. Thank you so much for sharing Harpy, Alaska with the five reservations on the Seminole Tribe in Florida. And of course, Roy Big Crane and your crew out of Pablo, Montana. We're also international. We've been aired across Canada for years over APTN Network. And now we welcome a new channel. Heartbeat Alaska is aired nightly over ITV Network in Taiwan. Jenny Green, like we share this region, the Inuit culture's traditional tradition. Now let's hear The native people would gather together and celebrate. And today this celebration is keeping the spirit alive. Hello, Taiwan. It's fun sharing our news with you. Today we travel to Pilot Station. And Pilot Station, we find out why it's named Pilot Station and isn't because of any airlines, that's for sure. I'll be back with Pilot Station Alaska right after this. Heartbeat Alaska would like to thank the following sponsors for making our show possible. Browns Electric. Thank you, Browns Electric, for your generous support. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full-service transportation and logistics company. Welcome back. Like many villages across the north, Pilot Station Alaska is struggling to live in the modern world as well as hold fast to their traditions. Traditions that go back thousands of years, traditions that have held people together from this area forever. Let's learn a little bit about the strengths of the people of Pilot Station. The mighty Yukon River begins as a trickle out of the Juneau snowfields. Surprisingly, the headwaters are only about 20 miles from the ocean. As a matter of fact, until 1997, no one actually knew exactly where it began. From its source, the Yukon gains water and strength for 2,300 miles until it flows out into the Bering Sea. The Yukon is about the same length as the Mississippi. From time immemorial, the Yupik and Athabascan people have used the Yukon as their highway. When settlers and gold seekers began plying steamboats up the river, they soon learned how treacherous it can be. Steamboat pilots had to memorize the many shallow spots, curves, and tributaries. Certain pilots would navigate only on the sections of the river they were familiar with. Tim and Marie Meyer, elders from Pilot Station, explain what used to happen here. Barbara Heckman translates for them off camera. <laughs> Before people were here, they had a little village down below where steamboat pilots used to stop and they call it Pilot Station. Robert and Annie Green also remember the steamboats. 
He said, um, how it become pilot station? He said it's been pilot station for for a long time. These two steam steam boats, one come from up river, one from down river, and they used to meet here and. They trade like that. They used to trade like that mm -hmm. with the captains. Mm -hmm. One captain go on the other boat that's going up river, and one captain that came from up river go to. They trade like that. Trade boats, and that's maybe that's why they call this pilot station mm -hmm. where they meet. And exchange. Pilot Station is the place where knowledge of the river and the ships themselves were passed along. <laughs> when these elders were growing up, life was very different in Pilot Station. Because there were no jobs. They used to go for a trapping. They'd be out one week or more trapping. When he was growing up, those elders used to tell them in groups. It doesn't matter whose kid they're talking to. In one group, they used to... Uh, in one group, they used to tell them what to do or what not to do what is wrong and right. Like all Alaska villages, the influence of Western culture increases as the years go by. Each new generation must find their own way to strike a balance between traditional and Western lifestyles. Some village leaders worry that they have failed to teach the youth enough about their traditional way of life. Father Stephen Heckman is with the Russian Orthodox Church in Pilot Station. Our kids today, I think they're more westernized you know, because of us, you know, because we, uh, we're attaching our, uh, at least we brought some back you know, from, from the world we learned. And today you know, there's more satellite TV and stuff like that. Before there were high schools in the village, the youth left to attend boarding schools. They spent those formative years living a western lifestyle. And then our kids are more westernized than we were uh, because we were kind of, you know, we had to go to high school, out of the village. We had to new, learn new cultures, you know. You know myself, I lived with uh, the Yugoslavian, and that's, that's way different from a Yupik or uh, <laughs> than somebody that we're familiar with. And they had a different, you know, different uh, lifestyle but we had something in common, you know, we had, we had our religion in common. The shift in culture created a generation gap. Imagine not being able to communicate with your own grandparents. For Martin Kelly, Pilot Station's tribal administrator, that's just what happened. Uh, we communicate and we uh, associate with our family members uh, naturally. And I do it with my mom because she's my mother, I, you know, I've known her pretty much all my life. Uh, I remember having uh, one of my brother-in-laws tell me I need to um, translate something for him. But I uh, actually say, say the same thing that my brother-in-law said in English and tell her that. So it was a uh, a, re a re repeat of what he said, but it wasn't done in Yupik. And that's the way I grew up. It, it kind of, uh, you know, I'm ashamed of it, but I'm, I, I got to accept it. The Yupik language is taught in the school here, but it is only one class. Bo Nick was in that class. And we learned like there's a Yupik dictionary and I have to write words down on the board and 
but I will see you build Malachi's, Malachi's, and learn a whole lot of words. I almost learned how to say a sentence. <laughs> Yupit. As Bo's experience shows, one Yupit class cannot save a language from extinction. We have a generation gap uh, with our communication because we've evolved from uh, a people that passed on tradition by way of uh, mouth and their culture and our tradition and our values are uh, engraved with our elders that speak the language that are that were used to living their way of lifestyle compared to this uh, new generation uh, in today's world. The communication link was broken a long while ago. Like many villages across the state, the youth also face a difficult decision once they graduate from high school. As far as jobs are concerned, and our kids that are graduating from high school, you know, what I've seen in the last 21 years since Lower Yukon School District came, and I have not seen one student in the last 21 years as far as pilot station is concerned that has graduated from here and come home with a degree. Connie George feels the pinch of the tough economy in pilot station. Life in the village, there's not that many jobs for people. And dropouts that I see have the jobs and the people and or the people that graduated they're not getting the jobs. They have to go somewhere else and look for their jobs. Margaret Nagasiak makes it easy to see why leaving the village is so tempting. When I, when I was five, we moved to Bethlehem. Then we moved back here after eighth grade, after I graduated from eighth grade. And I didn't like the idea of packing water, chopping wood, and honey buckets after living in Bethel with flush toilet and shower and running water. So I said, I was going to move back to Bethel after I graduated, and I did. Jonathan Nick has dreams, but to chase them, you'll have to leave the village. Recently, I just sent in my applications for Job Corps, and my brother, Daryl, he, he hooked me up with uh, a job with North Star Firefighters. Hopefully, I'll do good in but Arthur Heckman knows the youth can get a good job in the village with the right education. One thing Pilot Station needs, ironically enough, is pilots. They need to take that uh, initiative to leave our community four years, six years, and come back and apply those. You know, some of the things that I see that are very important to our infrastructure out here are maybe pilots. You know, we, we need some native pilots. You know, I've seen pilots that, uh, that have uh, gotten some training and left the region. And, you know, I'd like to applaud uh, the late uh, uh, Ron Tweedo. You know, he, had, uh, uh, he was one of the people that had a vision, and I continue to see that uh, here. And the other thing that I look at is education. We need to start getting our own native educators. A lot of our, you know, our educators, uh, teachers, I'm very happy that those people left home down maybe down from the lower 48 and come up here and teach. But you know, we need to start getting our kids interested in teaching that are going to live out here. You know, that our native are that are that have some vested interest in to the communities that they reside in. Arthur recognizes that, like the old steamship pilots trading off ships, the elders must pass control of the village on to the youth. The youth need to balance Western and traditional lifestyles. When Harpy Alaska continues, we'll show you what the people here are doing to take back their village and reverse the erosion of their culture and language. Being a fast boy, Carl Larry, fast boy. Is that a fast boy? Here's my kitty. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. 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 Hi
Now's your chance to get that home improvement project you've been wanting to start finished. Because at Northern Interiors, we're having a store-wide sale. Choose from our beautiful selection of kitchen cabinetry and countertops from 10 to 50% off. And get professional installation completely free of charge. Durable laminate flooring is on sale now for only $1.79 per square foot. Let us install your favorite brand name carpeting and get top quality eight pound padding for free. Northern Interiors, kitchens, floors, and a whole lot more. Six months ago, Claire made a promise to her family and to herself. The promise was she'd quit smoking by the time her next birthday came around. And already she's feeling better. She has more stamina, more energy, and her lungs are stronger than ever before. Flying in Alaska? Fly Frontier, the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier is expanding again. They've added new routes to Nome, Kotzebue, and the surrounding villages. As you can see, Frontier is now really covering Alaska. So the next time you fly, try Frontier. Frontier offers quick, convenient check-in, low fares, and service direct to many of the villages. Frontier Flying Service is the official airline of Heartbeat Alaska. Make it your official airline, too. In the 1890s, pioneers carved a railway through the rugged mountains between Skagway and the Klondike. More than a century later, the White Pass and Yukon route still makes this legendary run. Along the way, life has gotten better for folks working on the railroad, thanks in part to Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska, a health plan that's offered smart choices and quality coverage to the people of Alaska since before it was a state. Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We're here. We're with you. The people of Pilot Station are making their village stronger. They're drawing on the strength of their culture to bring people together. Let's face it, the economy in rural Alaska is tough. Jobs are very scarce and goods are very expensive. Commercial fishing, once a mainstay in many villages, is no longer profitable. The people in Pilot Station are not running scared. The village is actually growing. They are turning to the one thing that has always sustained them in the hard times, each other. This weekend, the community is spending three days rebuilding the bonds that weakened over the past few years. They are building a bridge across that generation gap. And speaking of generation gap, check this out. Anna Alec is 102 years old this weekend. So what happens when someone turns 102 in Pilot Station? Well, everyone brings their favorite dish and the whole village gives a potlatch. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Over the course of the weekend, there was a little bit of everything that makes village life special. Good food, fiddle dancing, yupik dancing, and even a special youth dance. The broom dance is a favorite up and down the Yukon. After each verse, everyone trades partners and tries not to be the one stuck dancing with the broomstick. When the rainbows turn the clouds away, when my broom turns the clouds again.
As the three days passed, one thing became clear to the people who attended. Alcohol is not the key to a good time. The key is simply spending time together, enjoying the good things in the people who share your village. For a few months last year, Pilot Station tried being damp, meaning alcohol was allowed, but couldn't be bought or sold in the village. For Father Stefan Heckman, it was clearly an experiment that failed. You know, I've been working as a counselor, as a village wellness counselor, for about close to 20 years now. And I noticed that last year when it uh, opened for a while, we're still feeling the effects today. Uh, you know, we have some families that are separated from their children. Uh, some people that went into jail for a while, you know, they're now they have to uh, face court, court sentencing, you know, through going through counseling or, you know, going through other programs. And uh, I'm afraid if it opens again, it'll be, you know, we'll just get ourselves set up for another, you know, another round of that. Winifred Nick remembers what it was like for those three months. Town's improved since it got dry. And I like it better this way. The gathering came at the perfect time. It brought people together, just as the village is about to take on some big goals. One of those goals sits right in the middle of the village. Connie George isn't afraid to talk about it. The lagoon, it's right in the center of the town village. And that pollutes the air and gets people sick and it stinks. The dump, it, it's the same thing, but further up towards the airport, that's where all the wind blows. Currently, about half of the village's homes have water and sewer. The process to bring the other half is underway, but there is a lot more to do. Also, the mighty Yukon River, the lifeblood of many villages, is becoming sick. And it is the very people who depend on it that are responsible. Uh, I want to make everybody aware that uh, we need to start cleaning the river, you know, if we're going to continue living off the salmon. I challenge all the kids uh, in trying to make them aware that, you know, polluting and littering alongside the river is just hurting our habitat and our game and our fish. I challenge the kids that, you know, to get a cup of water out directly from the river and look at it and see if they could drink it. Because if they can't, you know, our, our game, our fishing game are doing it without, um, without a choice. They, they, they live in the water, they swim, it, swim in it and, you know, it's everything, everything is directly from the water all our game, fishing game. Martin hopes that like the steamship pilots who use this spot to pass along knowledge of the river and trade ships, the people of Pilot Station will pass along the wisdom it will take for the next generation to guide this village and the Yupik culture into the future. As far as our community is concerned, we have a lot of good our, we have a lot of good people in the village, you know. We as parents need to take an active role in our children's education. You know, it's, there's, just, there's one thing to complain. You know, you can, everybody complains, but you need to come up with a solution. You need, if a, a high school student chooses to live a subsistence lifestyle, that in itself is, you know, is successful. I'd say just working together, you know, start working together as one for the benefit of the whole village. We are working at the right direction in, uh, towards that direction, like in with our leaders in our community and a lot of the leaders that we have in place now are do have concerns for the community as a whole in general. And I think uh, we are taking those steps and we need to continue 
to move it towards that direction to make this uh, just a better place to live in. But we, again, we do have a lot of our people in this community are very uh, generous to not only their relatives, but people that come into the community. It's just a good town. There are two sides to a man. One side is the animal, nothing but selfish pleasure. You know, the kind of man that leaves women and children alone. But the other side, now that's honorable. It's a part of you that desires to do what's right and always do your best. When you make a decision to wait to have sex, you've chosen honor. You've chosen not to expose anyone to pregnancy or disease because you're more than just sperm and child support. You're a man, not animal or honorable. What side controls you? The freshest salmon in town. There's no reason why Alaskans should be paying nine, ten dollars a pound in the stores when it's caught right down the street. Whether you're a small business looking for a large order or an individual looking for a healthy meal for your family, Fred's Alaskan Wholesale Seafood offers fresh Alaska salmon at the lowest price in town. So give Fred a call or stop by and visit him today. Come on down to Fred's where the seafood costs less than catching it yourself. Fred's Alaskan Wholesale Seafood, 230 East Potter, Suite 11. Thank you everyone for joining us for Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Heartbeat Alaska is produced in Anchorage, Alaska, and we're broadcast across Canada and to 13 other states, and we thank you so much for joining us. God bless every single one of you. Join us again next week.